topic today is precision cleaning, really uh, what, where, why, and how to clean. I hope everybody's staying absolutely safe. And really one of our goals here today is to really uh, share some ideas to reduce the risk of pathogens and cross-contamination. Okay, so now more than ever, I mean, there's considerable attention on the cleanliness of our shared spaces. When you start to pay attention to shared spaces and in trying to improve, you know, all along, you know, you also get budgetary challenges, employee wellness issues have risen to the occasion since COVID, um, sustainability impact, the overuse and improper use of products and procedures along with questions surrounding the long-term health effects and creating antibiotic resistant bacteria. These are key bullets on this particular point here. I mean, what will the long-term effect of, uh, of uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria be as we've really probably misused and overused disinfectants, you know, for the last 18 months. Cleaning and disinfecting must be accompanied, accompanied by cleaning validation and measurement. No longer can we just rely on our eyes and doing a visual approach there. We cannot continue to clean in the same manner as we have for hundreds of years because quite honestly, the world has changed. The population has changed. The standards of cleanliness have changed and we've got to really uh, revise and be, and be as innovative as we can. And at Charlotte Products, that's certainly one of our strengths is innovation. And, and by the way, thank you to everybody who's voted for us. We've won uh, two innovative awards, innovation awards for the ISSA in 2018 and 2019. And one of them is really for our OptiSolve uh, imaging program, which we're going to talk about today. Uh, positive employee and employer education and attention to the facts and details are important, right? And they're paramount today. You know, trying to motivate employees and the employer. That's a big task that it takes every single one of us to do that. You know, what have we learned since March of 2020? Obviously, COVID-19 has been a, glo a global health issue. Uh, you know, there's much more awareness. We know about the risk of this novel virus. And for those that don't know what the word novel means, it's new. Uh, you know, so, so it is a new virus. You know, what's going to happen afterwards? Today, you're hearing things like the Delta variant and, and the next one. And what I do know for a fact, as science will teach us, is history of viruses and bacteria and pathogens generally repeat. So this will not be the last last one once it's finally rid there will be another one okay and, and it's good for us to understand that the rising importance of our industry to promote clean safe and healthy and if you really wanted three words three tagline words for anybody's facility and business in the sanitation industry clean safe and healthy just automatically sounds like the right thing to do you know, there's a necessity for us to to continue to prioritize innovative solutions. You know, you cannot continue to use the same products you used in the same process as we've had in the past, because as I've said already, that's changed. We've got to learn to balance lower budgets. We've got to learn to work um, with less money as a general uh, as a general fact, while we still need to increase cleaning and disinfecting frequencies, you know, so that's a fine balance there. So some of the efficiencies and equipment and things, and that's really what our, the industry is about, and particularly ISSA and the trade show and things like that. We've got an adaptation and critical importance of the cleaning process. We And in, as a matter of fact, we're long overdue to revisit and improve cleaning in general and disinfectant protocols. So Obviously, it's been a, a devastating uh, affair, COVID-19, but when you look at the positive side, there are learnings for there. What you do with that with knowledge now and education is really uh, is what drives you forward as a company. Okay, some industry reactions. I mean, there's been anxiety, there's been panic, there's been turmoil, there's been a massive, massive amount of dollar spend. Uh, there's been some people that really have uh, uh, been uneducated in purchases as far as supply and facilities really had to buy any product they could get their hands on, regardless of the quality and the brand and, and the registration. You know, there was compliance issues because in the beginning, 
Everybody wanted a disinfectant that was registered for COVID-19, SARS-CoV-2, you know, and there was, it was non-existent. So all of a sudden there was panic there. I know all of the, the uh, health uh, regulation boards and, uh, and things like that, Health Canada and, and the EPA and who, uh, I mean, they fast track those kinds of things, you know, and if I go back to the poor quality product, I mean, the alcohol-based hand sanitizer is a perfect example because some of that stuff, quite honestly, uh, was not not good. You know, you had tequila, you had petroleum distillates, you had uh, uh, lacquer thinners, you had anything you could imagine. And it was designed not to hurt us. It was designed to help. But I mean, again, we've learned from that, you know, so top quality alcohol hand sanitizers are really some things that you need to look at. Now, there was an overwhelming demand for everything that created major havoc. We are the manufacturer. We do manufacture all of our disinfectants and sanitizers and floor coatings and, and, uh, and in cleaners and things like that. And I mean, we had shortages of packaging and corrugate and trigger bottles and caps and plastics and, you know, raw materials to formulate our, our, uh, our products there, like quats and peroxide based disinfectants and things. That was something that quite honestly, we all lived through, okay? There was unprecedented challenges. There were new chemical delivery methods introduced. And I'll talk about foggers and misters and uh, drones and things like that a little later on. There was a real overuse of aggressive chemistry. And I'll use aggressive chemistry as high level disinfectants and, and not used properly. We had surface residual to, uh, to really deal with and capital damage in some cases, right? And then we've really lost, uh, there was a loss of the importance of proper cleaning and really thinking that everything in the in the facility needed disinfecting and that's just not true everything in a facility does not need disinfectant you cannot possibly clean every single surface there uh, there is protocol there is the proper things to do and we'll educate you that as this session goes along here and away we go and again what are the short term and the long term health effects because believe me we may may not hear about these things now but they'll probably rise to occasion as the future goes on you know, facility challenges. Uh, COVID-19 was one pre, mid and post, right? Employee wellness, short term and long term effect. HR departments across the world have been going, running at full speed, trying to really put safety protocol and PPE and social distancing guidelines in and things. And that was a huge challenge. The overconsumption of disinfectants, incorrect procedures, budgetary needs, sustainability. Do not forget the importance of sustainability because I don't know about you, but I can go to a store and I get out of the car in the parking lot and I can, I can see four or five uh, face masks that are disposed of. I see gloves and things like that. Uh, that's going into the landfill. That's going into the sewage systems, the lakes, the rivers, the streams with livestock and things. So what's the effect of that going to be? That is a challenge, you know, uh, building and, uh, you know, building the trust of the public and your workforce to come back into a facility, lowering the risk of an outbreak, custodial knowledge transfer and education. If there was ever a time to really enhance the education and training of our workforce, our first line of defense, I may add, now is the time to do that. And then the, the conversation or the conversion from price-based cleaning to quality-based cleaning. We've talked about that for the last couple of years, but if you're a building service contractor, I mean, it comes down to how many, what's the price per square foot? And it was a driving, I mean, it was constantly being driven down to where there was very little profit, if any, and, you know, and the things need to be cut in that case. So hopefully we're looking at quality-based cleaning programs as opposed to just price now, because we deserve better. We need to be safer. And then of course, validation and measure. How do you prove to people you've done your job and you're clean? So these challenges, we understand, right? You know, from some current cleaning protocol, the, you know, we clean by visual approach. We chase debris. OK, and an example of that is if you've ever walked, uh, watched uh, anybody vacuuming. OK, the, in a building, it doesn't matter the size of the building, they'll actually go after staples and they'll go after uh, paper clips and pieces of paper and dirt and lint and things like that. I mean, and, and it really the vacuum is designed, you know, to go up and down the hallways, to go up and down rooms in a, in a consistent pattern. OK, that you're working very quickly and you're vacuuming the whole entire surface, not going back and forth and going from there. I, I'll use the same same. Uh, 
example, if you cut your lawn at your house, if you just went around, you would never go around and just chase, you know, leaves and to cut them up and, and whatever. You would go back and forth in a consistent pattern. And that's the most efficient, you know, with, without question there. You know, few actually pre-clean surfaces when it comes to disinfecting or food service sanitizing. If you look at the label, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit today. If you look at that label, believe me, the, all of the rules and the instructions are there and about 95% of us don't follow it properly. Okay, we over dilute product. We don't respect dwell times. We don't use a potable water rinse on food contact surfaces. Okay, so what we're doing really it needs uh, you know it has an area for improvement there's there's major potential if we don't get it right to create the long term risk of immunities and antibiotic resistant bacteria it's just there, you know, and, and it's a scientific fact, as a matter of fact. If I look, if you're wondering why I have a mop bucket, a single cavity mop bucket on my screen here, the one on the left, this is a real shot of a real bucket in a real facility, okay? And, and, uh, and we still use, and it doesn't always have to be that nasty looking, by the way, but we still use a single cavity mop bucket. OK, and that's really we consider that a soil virus and bacteria spreader. What can you do there? You can use a divided bucket. You can do a two bucket trolley system. You can use microfiber flap technology, whatever it is. But I mean, you owe it to yourself to use a divided bucket. Don't come back from the floor and recontaminate your cleaning solution and then go to another room and spread it. I mean, these are not a huge capital investment. Talk to the people at the show, talk to your distributors and things. And the first thing I could do to make a huge difference is replace all of my single cavity buckets with a, with a, with a divided or dual cavity. OK, the five critical elements of disinfectant security, really a summary of what every particular registered disinfectant label reads. And that is always use a registered product. Always read and understand the label. Always dilute it, uh, you know, uh, properly without question. Verify it with PPM paper. Uh, always pre-clean the surfaces. Always respect the dwell time. And when you come in contact with food service, food surfaces, you've got to make sure you do a potable water rinse. That's where the failure is. If you follow all five of those, you pass. If you skip anyone or shortchange anyone, you fail. In this day and age, we really, quite honestly, can't afford to fail. OK, delivery methods, bit of a sensitive subject here because innovation is key. And since the beginning of COVID-19, new technologies such as foggers and misters and electrostatic sprayers and even drones have flooded the market. The reason why they came about is because all of a sudden everybody thought they had to disinfect every single surface in a building, which is not true. OK, and uh, and and but they are there with good intent and I'm not I'm not promoting or, or demoting any any uh, any brand out there because there's hundreds of them, as a matter of fact, there. But with every delivery method, regardless of the type, and this is what you need to understand, you must follow the exact exact label instructions on every single product. They are different. You've got to make sure that you do that. It is the law. And if you fail, you, if you don't follow them, you actually fail. You're not disinfecting properly. So if you go in a room with an electrostatic sprayer of any sort, Mr. or Fogger, and you haven't followed the guidelines of the label, you are failing. You can't go in and just simply spray everything and then walk away. You have to go in, you have to pre-clean, you have to respect dwell time, all of those things that we've talked about. So really an area that you can improve. These are great tools if you use them correctly. OK, long standing and sporadically used validation and measurement tools. And these are good, by the way. OK, we currently this first one really isn't. But I mean, you know, we currently have a there's a major relevance on a visual check. We cannot do that anymore. It is important for people coming into your facility and judging it. But it's really that invisible point that you can't see that we're going to address here today. That's the right move. UV lights, ultraviolet, glow germ identifiers, Aden enzyme triphosphate, in other words, ATP meters, you know, they measure relative light units in organic matter, PPM test strips, you know, now but keep in mind, people didn't even understand this, uh, they, they had a, 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 a some sort of communication breakdown, but there are different uh, PPM strips for bleach peroxides and quats, they're all different ratings there. So if you're using a peroxide, use the test kit accordingly. If you're using a quad or a bleach, which sodium hypochlorite, whatever it may be, do that. OK, you know, now the good news is, is since COVID-19, we've witnessed a nice uptick in that. 
Okay. So one of the questions on today's webinar is really why clean? Okay. And the first one that comes to mind, other than health and safety, which is really paramount, is customers drive revenue. They will no longer come back to a dirty facility. They will no longer come back to a dirty hotel, a dirty restaurant, whatever it may be, a dirty restroom, washroom, whatever it may be. You know, so once you get them back, how do you convince them to stay there and how do you, get, you keep them coming back? You know, cleanliness is the number one driving force of that. You could have the best food, the fanciest hotel with the best bedding and everything else. But if it is not clean, they will not come back. OK, and that is the, you know, really affects your long term sustainable business. You know, employees, customers, all facility occupants, they'll have heightened concerns. They'll be looking visually, visually. They'll be, they'll be, I, I mean, I know some of the online places sell UV lights and things and they'll be coming in there and they'll all be armchair critics. And rightfully so, they should be, right? You know, so that's some of the importance of education is how do you prove to those people that your facility is clean? Well, that's really precision cleaning and validation is really what it is. You know, you've got to have that assurance without question. OK, there's continuous updates on cleaning standards. You know, you know I, what I, what uh, really is one of my pet peeves. If I go into a, a restroom and the cleaning chart is filled out that it's already been cleaned for the next couple of days uh, and signed off and everything else. I mean, there's room for improvement there. Odor control is a huge issue and we really need to focus on odor control. Clean and fresh atmosphere really makes people feel good and there's a sense of security with that. You know, make it easy for your customers and your employees to wash their hands. Don't hide the dispensers. Don't have inexpensive, poor quality hand soap. It really does come down it's, it, to the cost per, per wash, okay, and hand dry if you're talking about towel and tissue and things like that, you know, and use the best quality alcohol hand sanitizer and make sure you reduce those concerns, right? You know, there's talk some restaurant, uh, uh, sorry, restaurants that I've been in, they actually have uh, a hand sanitizer on every single table. OK, not only at the lobby and the entrance and everything else, but they actually put it right on the table. You, do you know the, the return on investment you'll get from that if you do it? I mean, that's something that you really want to do. OK, so my real point is here is let's remove the guesswork, the visual guesswork and the time and the risk. And let's talk about how to precision clean. OK, and really what that means is it's the monitoring and it measures cleaning performance, optimizing your return on investment and your resources. OK, it's a clear understanding and a demonstration of what, where, why and how to clean. And really, in a summary, it's your path to safer spaces. And I don't think there's anybody that doesn't want a path to safer spaces these days. OK, um, there are all kinds of uh, measurement tools. Like I said, there's, you know, does it look clean? Was it cleaned? And are there germs? You know, all of those things we've talked about here is Optisolve, will really make the invisible visible for you. OK, expectations of cleanliness standards. If you look at the left side of the screen, there is one way to clean and that's cleaning for appearance. That's visual. There was a day when that was acceptable. There's still a day when in, in low risk areas and things, that may be the only thing that you can do. However, if you're in a, a, a healthcare facility, surgery, veterinarian, food, livestock, food processing, anything else, you cannot do that any longer. You've got to clean for health. You've got to have infection prevention. You've got to have transparency and accountability built in. And really, that's where precision cleaning comes in. So this is really cleanliness standards that we need to adapt to. How does it work? What are the four things involved? Obviously, an assessment. OK, you've got to proactively plan and track and standardize your site uh, uh, assessments. You've got to you've really got to have a, establish a benchmark from before, during and after, you know, and this is all uh, our Optisolve Savvy program, which is a cloud based quality management software. That assessment gives you your workforce, your people in your facility that make the decisions 
everything they need to do uh, to really have a starting foundation. Then you've got to put an action plan together. And this is really where some of us fall fall down a little bit. Is It's great to have a plan, but the execution is critical. Okay. You've got to make sure that you've got that you check your compliance and you test your surfaces and you've got the uh, advanced methodology such as, you know, OptiSolve imaging in there. And if you look at that door handle below the doorknob, that's just one quick example of what you'll see. And I'll go into a little greater detail as we go along. Analytics, proof. OK, you've got to validate. You've got to have the proof of are you improving? Are you not improving? There are more reports and dashboards available here than then we'll customize them to anything that you're re really looking for there. But you've got to validate your results. You've got to monitor. You've got to put an improvement program in there and constantly get feedback and really educate your people on the proper training and continuous improvement. OK, and the assurance. Share that high level feedback with your team. Involve the team. You cannot put a price tag on motivating anyone in our team, you know, because if you use one of their ideas, you respect their opinions, you involve them in the decisions and things, they feel good about it. And there isn't one employee in the world that if they get recognition of some sort, doesn't have to be a great big fancy thing. If they get any level of recognition, I can tell you, you just make their life easier and nicer and happier. And that bodes well for morale and it bodes well for cleanliness standards, right? So really the assurance that you're delivering clean, healthy and safe spaces is really what it is, okay? The OptiSolve is broken down into two particular components. You've got Pathfinder, which is your surface imaging. That actually allows you to take the uh, images throughout your facility, any high contact uh, surfaces, any surface for that matter, and really gives you what you would see as a visual detection or what it looks like for the eye. And then also, but then, then your high risk areas, uh, as a matter of fact, through the imaging technology. That is a, an iPad. It comes with the program. You've got your your um, your photo uh, unit that's on there as well that actually uh, does all of the photos for you. It's a turnkey particular piece of equipment there. I'll explain a little bit more about it there. But that comes with it. It doesn't. Ha you don't have to adapt it to any of your IT needs and, and laptops and things, cameras in your facility. It comes with it. Then you've got our OptiSolve Savvy, which is our SICE site assessment validation indicator. That is your checks and balances. That's your scorecard. That's where you've really showing, are we winning? Are we staying neutral? Are we, are we losing? I mean, you know, let's validate exactly what we're doing and hold people accountable, you know, for, for their, their contribution to it as well. And this is really about as this is probably one of the night, the best visions that I like actually, because if I've got a door handle, now, we all know that door handles are a touch point, a high contact touch point. You know, same with any knobs or taps and things like that. But let's not let's not stop there. If I look at this door handle on the left, it is very clean. It looks like there's no issue whatsoever. But when I look at OptiSolve and I do the surface imaging and I, I create the image, that's exactly the risk point there. OK, now you need to stop the spread and lower the risk of cross contamination. And these are on hard, non-porous surfaces, by the way, you know, but you can look at that image on the right and you can see exactly if you're the cleaning individual involved, if you're the supervisory individual, the inspector, whatever it may be, health and safety, doesn't matter who it is. You can see that we need to do some improvement. And OptiSolve is not about really uh, reprimanding people or, or really saying, listen, you're not doing a very good job. This is all about, look at, let's learn together. Let's motivate. Let's teach each other the proper areas to clean. And that's what we really like best about it. OK, uh, you've seen the door handles on the left and the right, but there's that doorknob in the bottom center. Right. And again, it's very similar to the door handle. The knob on the on the door looks totally fine to me. You could be an employee walking out of the bathroom, going back to prepare sandwiches or wraps or steak dinner. You could be going to do food processing, you know, where you're you're preparing the vegetables and the salads and whatever it may be. And that's how easy cross contamination happens. So the visual observation is one thing, but Pathfinder is the best thing.
without doubt. Okay, you can see here, you've got a non-detect zone by the speckles you can see on the right-hand side. You have a moderate risk, a high risk, and a severe risk. So really, if I'm looking, I'm gonna really look for the yellow, orange, red areas there, and I'm going to teach my people exactly how to do it. Does it take more time? No, it really doesn't. If you're sporadically cleaning these things, it takes more time. But if you get into a routine, if you're following an SOP process, if you've got the right tools for your custodial and, and janitorial staff, okay, it will actually buy you time. You could do these things more efficiently there. So just don't automatically think it's going to cost more because it has to be cost effective. Okay. So that's a perfect example of how you can train it. Okay. And by the way, I mean, uh, honestly, we have language barriers in our industry. Every industry has language barriers. Okay. We, we, we try to speak and communicate in every single language, but some people, there is a barrier there. You know, so if you're a brand new employee today and you're coming in and I'm responsible for teaching you, I can show you this imaging so you know instantly the high risk areas where you're going to have perhaps a, a, an issue with cross contamination or illness or even worse of employees. And that's really you know, precision cleaning. Do I need to clean all the walls? Do I need to clean all the carpets? Do I need to do these specific areas and shelves? Probably not. But this, this, this imaging really allows me to develop that program that's really classified as precision cleaning. Okay, a keyboard. We're all aware of keyboards. We're all we all know that there there's some issues. Now, if it's a personal space, it's a little different. But believe me, it's not quite. It's still a high risk. It's not as dramatic as this one on the right. But if you're a communal office, if you have cubicles and somebody uh, is is using your your uh, you know your keyboard when you're not there and you don't know about it, or you're having uh, you don't have time to go to the break room and get your coffee or your sandwich and you're digesting food there. These are perfect cases that you simply, I mean, you've got issues, right? You know, so what we do here, as you can see in the top, you can see our, our imaging uh, device here. It's a matter of bringing it over, setting it on the tripod, you know, going through the procedures to start it. We spray on a DNA tracker, a bio spray on the surface, and that helps, helps once it dries, it illuminates it. You do your images and that your end result is on the right hand side. OK, and that is really what it is. You know, SOPs, you must have and develop a standard operating procedure. You can no longer afford to go through it. We could never afford to tell you the truth, to just go to the closet, grab our tools, our buckets and our mops and our cloths and things like that and head out to clean. Because if you do do that, that is visual. Right. If you have a standard operating procedure and there's just an example of one on the bottom right hand side there. But basically, you can prioritize them by the cleaning task. You can highlight them by your high touch areas, the areas that you were finding with the imaging that were a risk uh, point as well, as far as that goes. People are accountable that way. Help your people write the SOPs, because quite honestly, if you're they they in most cases know exactly what items to clean, but let's help them do that. You know, so what does an SOP develop for you? It develops what to clean, where to clean, how often to clean, um, you know, and, and really education is about why. So if you haven't developed an SOP, you certainly need to do that. And that can actually come with the program here and help you do it. OK, customized reporting. There are more reports here from really benchmarking where you're starting to where you're progressing, where you're not quite hitting your 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 threshold for passing and where you're excelling. OK, red zones, green zones, all by particular, uh, you know, items throughout a facility, whether you're really gaining or you're not. Right. You can assess the number of, uh, of uh, surfaces that you're that you're touching, where you're having difficulty bringing them up to your standards and things like that. And these are customized to you. just work with our team and we'll help you uh, with our IT team there and our expertise team. And we'll help you design the reporting that actually fits your facility.
Okay, uh, you can if you're using an ATP meter today uh, and you prefer to continue using that, but also complement it with OptiSolve Opti Savvy, you can do image, you can do imaging and you can do reporting take into your other validations. Okay, so you can see down at the very bottom, I, I mean, a, a, a swab testing with an ATP meter is all about having the lowest number regardless of the brand of the ATP meter. Okay, and you can see here uh, the passing score you can see what the score was you can see who it was poor, performed by you can put in comments and all of those kinds of things you can see whether it's severe ratings you can see uh, you know all of your score basically you know is really what it is dated the whole works if you ever have an issue and the health department comes in and whatever as well you think about this is they're going to say prove to me what your processes are well you've got not only your processes with sops and things but you've also got your score your 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 uh, your grading and things and whole work so i mean it's all validation is really what it is there okay a couple of other examples here you know you're and even you know you've got to commit to doing the uh, the, the assessments and they don't take long to do the assessments but you can see right here on this one the average score of the completed assessments you know if you've only done so many assessments and you haven't done the other ones, it'll record it. You know, the numbers that you have yet to do and things like that. So I'm not going to spend a lot more time going over the reporting, but keep in mind it is customized. It is suited to your particular facility and our people will help you walk through and, and establish that. Okay, the actual Pathfinder Halo kit, and that is actually called a Halo. I think I called it a couple other things there, like a camera or whatever earlier, but the official word is a Halo, but it's one kit complete comes into your facility has the tripod has the in all the instructions the halo the ipad all of the battery packs and things like that one complete kit ready to go okay and really the uh people have asked i mean what is the how do i test a surface how do i do that well there's really six steps here number one you mount the halo and the and the ipad on the tripod you go to your image, you wanna keep eight inches to 12 inches away. You wanna run your contextual images, okay? Uh, you set it there. Then you take your bio tracker spray and you spray it on the on the surface and let it dry. Then you, you, know, you start your imaging process and it'll run through a series of pictures that are there. It processes them there and then it's an automatic upload to the cloud. OK, and that is as difficult as it is. You can go through your whole facility and you can do one image or you could do 100 images. OK, it depends on your facility, the size, the testing, you know, that your requirements and things like that. So very, very easy to do. It's really what I would call sort of plug and play as it arrives to you. OK, now there are some factors for success and that is and there's six of them because really bringing in a new system um you know there are going to be people that really are excited to hear it uh, and and start using it there are going to be people that you know, you know are sort of skeptical i guess it could be but you want to have an internal champion of some sort okay somebody that can really transfer the knowledge to your whole entire team get behind it get the buy-in be excited and proud about it and confident about it and away you go it's like when we Back in the early 90s, when we brought out uh, Green Seal and EcoLogo, UL EcoLogo certified products and things like that, just bringing green products in didn't mean it was automatically going to be a go and an easy transition. You needed somebody to be that champion to help you. You know, have a committee. It doesn't have to be a large committee, but have a committee there of some sort that somebody that chairs it and they're that champion that continuously motivates and drives it. OK, the assessments and SOPs, you really need to have an SOP, you know, and you've got to have it configured for each location and area. It's not a question of whether you need an SOP in your facility or not today. It's which one really best suits your facility. What are the risks and things like that involved? Right. The technology, you have to have a champion that's comfortable with technology. 
right? You know, and has access to high speed internet. It's really not that critical. It's really not that uh, tough these days. Even I've adapted to technology to a certain degree. Uh, everyone teases me about it all the time, but you need that, you know, you've all got that person that just is, is really comfortable with technology and you need that, right? Reports and analytics, you know, and this is really the measurement of it. This is to your benchmark as to, are you gaining? Are you getting better? Are you faltering? Where can you improve? Proof, right? You know, so you need management that supports evidence based outcomes and accountability and transparency. And unless you've got that, you probably won't have the result that you want to have. So these six factors are extremely important, right? Continuous improvement. There isn't anybody that what does not want to continuously improve that culture open it up to feedback and support teamwork. And I mean, and like I said before, morale is more important now more than ever than it's ever been in our industry. Because really, we're the first line of defense there and it's up to us to really provide cleaner, safer facilities for all of our uh, employees and all of our occupants of our buildings. And you've got to have the commitment, okay? The willingness to dedicate the time. There is a little bit of a startup time involved and I'll review that in a couple of minutes there for you. And the resources to really achieve that precision cleaning standards and the outcomes. So, so just a, a bit of a heads up here. There are six factors. If you follow these six factors, you'll do extremely well. Okay. So getting started with Savvy in four steps, uh, really, um, you know, this is, you've got that dedicated master user, we'll call that or internal champion. And so there's a, and our team works with you all along the way here, as a matter of fact. So we've got about a 45 minute introduction. So if you're looking at this and want to move forward, we want to basically, you know, have that initial meeting to make sure we cover all of the ins and outs about it and technology and things like that. Then we set up about an hour long meeting that is a demonstration and, and, uh, and consulting that we basically preview the software. We would do a preview of the software and the hardware and how the system works, you know, and, uh, and we continue to help you streamline your setup there. Then there's a subscription model, and this is where the pricing stage comes into it because there are there we will we will put a subscription together that there's a, a base package and rate right up to a, a supreme package and it comes down to how many images do you want to constantly assess in your particular facility so in other words what do you want to get out of it how many surfaces are here how many how many areas are you going to break up your facility and things like that very similar to the newspaper. There are people that want it seven days a week that costs a little more. There's people that only want it on the weekends or people that only want it the weekdays, right? So we talk about that subscription and this is not a costly thing. It's a quarterly billing, by the way, and it goes through. And with that quarterly billing, you get us, you get our, you get our uh, ongoing support. And you also, whenever there is any software uh, updates and things like that, you get those automatically as well. OK, and then the other thing is is optional is there's a couple of sessions there that you know, when you really go live and we work with you to make sure that everything is there, providing the tips and make sure that is seamless. So bottom line is you've got a few hours of setup time here, uh, depending on what your needs are. It could be more if you're very complex. But I mean, our team is here to help you and configure it and uh, and go from there. OK, so who do you look at? Who, who really, uh, um, you know, applies healthcare, obviously food safety, processing, prep, whatever institutional commercial buildings, building service contractors. I mean, there's no question you need every single types of these facilities need to need to do that. OK, and let's talk about an innovation value that really is the uh, one of the core values behind Charlotte. And that's the three pillars of sustainability. You know, they're social, they're environmental and they're economic. And everything we do is really surrounding this. So so really social, you want to lower the risk of an outbreak. You want to provide safer spaces. You want to rebuild the public trust. You want to tell people what you're doing. Socially, it's the right thing to do. The environment, there's no question it's a it's a. Well, one of the highest priorities these days, it's the right thing to do. There's a difference between environmentally friendly and there's a difference between sustainability. And really, it's the right, you know, what's the long term, short term effects there and environment, you would never go wrong doing the right thing there. And then the economics, it generally, you've got to clean and disinfect better with less money. 
Okay, this is system isn't something that's going to cost you, uh, you know, uh, you know, crazy amount of money or an uptick or whatever it may be, because the whole thing is a program that comes into precision cleaning. Let's address that high cost of labor, which is 90 percent of your spend, by the way. And, and away we go from there. So the economics surrounding Optisolve, it's predicted that facilities will have lower budgets and less spend. We know there's going to be a need to increase cleaning and smart, intelligent disinfecting. We know that uh, you know how to, that it's very difficult to clean and disinfect more with less money and fewer people. And you cannot possibly clean and disinfect every surface. These are facts that we need to understand. So what do we need to do? Adapt. We got to implement the savvy software, identifying the highest areas of risk, the areas of improvement where we can obviously do better. We want to track and document the results through analytics and really clean those specific surfaces, increasing productivity. That alone economically is the best thing that you could possibly do today. You know, what's the return on investment for the facility? Validation, measurement, liability support is key and a morale boost, right? Improved cleaning procedures, improved product selection, improved training for any experience level of user. You know, you know, precision cleaning, lower the cost of your cleaning program by, by improving your efficiency. Limit the risk of a shutdown due to cross-contamination. You know, facility, you're finally meeting infection control standards as per your objectives and avoiding any kind of regulatory compliance issues or fines and things like that. You can rank your high touch areas to show problem areas and then and then and really what you're doing well by by using that color map to your surface and easy tra easy training and risk and the risk of uh, mitigation okay validation and improving cleaning re programs using the software allowing for full color images to detect contamination now quickly without any issues of the language barrier right? And identifying and providing analysis for corrective actions. And that's the most important thing is how do I improve that improve your infection control program, you know, and then reducing overall spend by maximizing cleaning efficiencies. I'd say there's some pretty core return on investment items in there for you, you know, with, without doubt. You know, some tips for infection control, prioritize validated and measure results within your facility. Adapt that precision cleaning program. Know where, why, when to clean. Be in control of your destiny and your cleanliness. Surround yourself with good, solid partners that know what to do and how and provide that facility experience. And surround yourself with suppliers that also have that facility expertise and lower the risk of an outbreak. Okay. You know, in summary, we're all in this together. We're available for expanded counsel and knowledge. We must develop innovative solutions that provide clean, safe spaces. We have to educate our, and, uh, our people, our first line of defense, and we need to pre-clean surfaces safely and then sparing with a good quality cleaner, by the way, in most cases, and then sparingly, thoughtfully, and carefully apply disinfectants following the five critical elements. Okay. So there's a couple of things that I have that I'll just go over before we open it up with questions and, and really, you know, uh, who, what, where, and when uh, really is you've got to consider the risk level within your facility. Are there older adults? Are there children? Are there uh, immune compromised individuals there? Okay. Who, so who is in your, what level do you need to be? What? Product selection is critical, right? Are you using the right product? There are three levels of disinfectants that are low, mid, and high, and which one's correct for your facility. And by the way, the product with all of the, with, with about 30 or 40 or 50 kill claims there is not necessarily going to do a better job if you don't have the risk, okay? Where the risk lies is when you're using it incorrectly, and you're going to create long-term immunities there of antibiotic resistant bacteria. So, so aggressive chemistry, never lose the sight of the importance of a good quality cleaner. Okay. And then caringly, thoughtfully, and sparingly use a disinfectant or a food service sanitizer. The same thing with sanitizing. The rules on the label are to clean, pre-clean ahead of time, not just go spray and wipe and away we go. So where? What surfaces do we need to do? You know, high, high contact, high touch, you know, high use surfaces that basically there's a variable amount of people touching them. So I would use a hotel room. It's not always you or me staying in the same hotel room. It's a variety of people, a communal shower, a washroom, things like that, you know, and when training is critical. 
it requires constant attention and review. You've got to establish your SOPs. They work well, okay, uh, and, and you want to have them in a written and, and uh, visual format. You know, follow best practices from government agencies. Utilize checklists, software programs such as Optisolve. Include tips to clean better. Gather those from your people. And then also don't forget additional training tips and information that include food contact surfaces the five critical elements of disinfectant, seasonal challenges, sensitive surfaces, and slip and fall avoidance, okay? So those are key things that you need to remember. We put an industry link page on here from Charlotte Products and Optisolve and Process Cleaning Solutions, the CDC and the World Health Organization. There's any number of information that you have there. And with that being said, we'll open it up for questions. I would like to personally thank everybody for joining us today. And I know this is uh, available afterwards and, uh, and really, so we'll turn it over to questions and answers now. Okay, thank you. Okay, so it, it looks like we've got uh, here, what have we got here? Do you have an established pricing program and is it based on the amount of images a facility will require? Is invoicing monthly, quarterly, or annually? Well, that's great questions. Uh, uh, yes, we do have an established pricing program. The contacts are both myself and Matt Strano on that slide that's there. Um, and it is based on the amount of images that you require. And it is uh, generally, it's a quarterly invoice is what it may, mean, it, it, what it may be. So Rachel, hopefully that answers that. Uh, question one, oh, sorry, it's down there again. Uh, it's the same exact one here. Okay, uh, what is Charlotte's preferred process and position for cleaning and disinfecting surfaces? Uh, that is a great question. And quite honestly, the large percentage of facilities fail when it comes to properly disinfecting or sanitizing a surface. So our preferred process is pre-clean using safer chemistry, the right cleaner, uh, and then sparingly, thoughtfully, and caringly apply a disinfectant or a food service sanitizer. And let's talk about some economics here, okay? Disinfectants are generally lower, uh, are higher dilution ratios. In other words, they cost more, okay? So they may dilute at 1 to 64, 1 to 12, 1 to 16, 1 to 32. You can use a good quality, safer cleaner that'll dilute 1 to 64, 1 to 128, 1 to 256. So your cost of ready to use, not only will it be safer, okay, and clean better because it's really based on superior detergency, but it'll cost dramatically less and it's safer in the long run. So clean with the right cleaner, okay, and then apply the disinfectant of the food service sanitizer accordingly, right? Okay, it is really what we want to do. Uh, what types of facilities do you recommend Optisol for? Four, do the employees adapt to this relatively quickly and do they see it as a positive or a negative? All types of facilities, obviously anything to do where cross-contamination could be or is an issue. It could be food service, serious issues there, could be healthcare, LTC facilities, veterinarian facilities, could be anything to do with commercial buildings, airport terminals, transit uh, stations, you know, subway, rail car, things like that, as a matter of fact. And yes, people do. If you come in with the right message and you get the right uh, buy-in from people and you, you establish that champion, like we said, you really do get a positive uh, feedback. Don't use it as a tool that, that says you're failing. Use it as a tool to say, look at, here's where we're starting. Here's what we need to do. And this is our progress moving along. So really, Really, uh, there's been a lot of people, as a matter of fact, adapt to this in the union environment. And uh, unions are the strictest facilities going about caring for their people, which is the right thing. And they're adapting to it relatively quickly as well. So if a, if a union environment uh, likes this and adapts to this, then it's, uh, then it's certainly uh, proof there. Uh, the last question that we've got is, can you explain the five critical elements of disinfectant security? Uh, I certainly can without question. Uh, number one, use a registered uh, disinfectant. Um, in the beginning, they, we were going, uh, I mean, we were starstruck with the amount of questions of why isn't SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 on a label? Well, to tell you the truth, it didn't exist at the time when it started in March of 2020. Um, you know, so and now I mean, we had thousands of questions for that particular claim. And by the way, in the last three or four months, how many questions do you think we've had? Is it on the label now? 
We've had practically none. Okay. Now, when the next virus or the next uh, bit of bacteria or pathogen comes along, we'll go through that panic again. There is what we'll do. So, so really, you know, the first one is registered. Okay. On the end list, on the Health Canada list, wherever you are in the globe, it needs to be there without doubt. And then mixing it correctly. More does not work better. In fact, it, it, it impairs the actual cleanliness level. It'll leave a residual. It could cause sensitivities with lungs, eyes, and skin, and things like that, you know, so never, ever dilute. You cannot kill more than 100% of the stated pathogens on the label. So basically, make sure you're diluting it properly. It's not a question of whether you need dilution control or not in your facility, is which system best suits your needs, okay? They're very cost-effective. They'll pay for themselves. The return on investment is absolutely stellar. There's no chemical contact and things like that, you know. So so, so make sure you're doing that. If you follow everything on a label, you will succeed. If you, if you adjust or manipulate in any particular way, you will fail. So registered product, diluting properly, pre-clean the surface. Okay, you must remove gross filth. So in other words, when you put the, the, the uh, disinfectant on, that it comes into direct contact with the, with the organic matter, the viruses, the bacteria, whatever, and it does its job. OK, if you try to pre-clean uh, by just or sorry, if you don't pre-clean, you'll fail. If you just spray it on the surface, I mean, you're losing. Right. And that's where I really, uh, you know, really need to educate. We need to talk to people about pre-cleaning that surface. Uh, we can't, what we're doing now is, is not working. So really uh, pre-cleaning, respect the dwell time. They're all different, by the way. I mean, we have one, our Envirus Solutions ES15 that has a 30 second claim for COVID-19. Okay, right now, right? 30 seconds, that's it, right? You need to respect 30 seconds. By the way, when we started in March of 2020, the kill time for that same product was five minutes. You know, but we've had advancements come along and things like that. So respecting the dwell time and then when food contact surfaces are around or teething children, I, I really like to encourage a potable water rinse around teething children and things like that. So so really, uh, I think that's the last question that we have. Thank you very much for those questions. And again, on behalf of Charlotte Products Worldwide, we really want to thank you. Uh, for taking the time, revisit this. We are available for consultation in your facility, whether it be in your facility, whether it be virtual, but really now is the time to make a difference, okay? That OptiSolve program is state-of-the-art. We've won the Innovation Award. It's not a question of whether you need it in your facility or not. It's a question of how fast can I get it? You know, all of the material is there, all of the benefits are there, all of the efficiencies are there, and all of the health and safety is there. 